Gloria in excelsis Deo. Dominus vobiscum. Oremus. Deus qui omnipotentiam tuam parcendo maxime et miserando, miserando manifestes, multiplica super nos misericordiam tuam, ura tua promissa correntes, celestium bonorum facias esse consortes, Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vive et regnat, in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Epistolae Viati Pauli Apostoli ad Corinthios. Fratres, scitis coniam cum gentes esetis, ad simulacra muta prout duce bamini eiuntes. Ileo notum vobis facio, quod nemo in spiritu de eloquens, dicida nata ma Iesu. Et nemo potes dicere, Dominus Iesus, nisi in Spiritu Santo. Divisiones vero gratiarum sunt, idem autem Spiritus. En divisiones ministrationem sunt, idem autem Dominus. Et divisiones operationem sunt, idem vero Deus, qui operator omnia in omnibus, unicui qui autem dator manifestantio spiritus ad utilitatem, alii quidem per spiritum dator sermo sapiensiei, 
Ali autem sermo sciencie secundum eundem spiritum. Altra fides in eodem spiritum. Ali gratia sanitatum in un spiritum. Ali aboratio virtutum, ali profezia, ali discrezio spirituum, ali genera linguarum, ali interpretatio, interpretatio sermonum. E gaudem omnia operatorum usut atque idem spiritus, dividem singulis prod vult. Dominus vobiscum, <coughs> sequencia sancti evangelii secundum lucam. In illo tempore, dixit Iesus ad cosdam, qui in se confite bantam quam justi, ed aspernavam tur ceturus parabolam istam. Duomines ascenderun in templum urop orarem, unus farseus ed alter publicanus. Farseus tans, e caput se orabat, Deus, gratias ago tibi quia non sunt dicicu cetri hominum, raptores, in justi, alduteri, veloneciam hic publicanus. E uno bis in sabito, decimas dom omnium que posideo. Et publicantus an longe stans non lebat, ne coculos ad celam levare, se percutsieba tectus suum dicens, Deus propitius est omici peccatori. Dico vobis descendit hic justificatus in domum suum abillo, qui omnis qui se exaltat humiliabitur, e qui se humiliat exaltabitur. The epistle is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Brethren, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols whenever the impulse drove you. That is why I am telling you that nobody who speaks under the impulse of God's Spirit ever says, Cursed be Jesus, 
And nobody can say Jesus is Lord unless he is inspired by the Holy Spirit. There are different gifts, but one same Spirit. There are different ministries, but one same Lord. And there are different functions, but the one same God, who is the cause of all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, the Spirit imparts the expression of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit imparts the expression of knowledge. By the same Spirit, one receives faith. By the same Spirit, another is given the gift of healing, while still another gets miraculous powers. Prophecy is given to one, to another the ability to distinguish one spirit from another. One gets the gift of tongues, another one that of interpreting the tongues. But the one and the same spirit produces all these gifts, distributing them to each one just as he wills. The Gospel reading is from Luke. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable addressed to those who believed in their own righteousness and held everyone else in contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other a tax gatherer. The Pharisee stood forward and prayed as follows. I give you thanks, God, that I am not like the rest of men, grasping, unjust, adulterous, or even like this tax gatherer. I fast twice weekly. I tithe all that I possess. The tax gatherer, however, kept his distance and would not dare raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went home from the temple justified, but not the other. For everyone who exhausts, exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You could say that in the gospel today, you have a snapshot, a photograph, an image, a reflection of 20th, 21st century humanity. The conflict that goes on in the heart and the soul of every human being, the story of the Pharisee and the publican. Two men went to worship, the gospel says, in the temple, one was a Pharisee, which meant a church leader, synagogue leader, Jewish leader, religious leader. The other one was a tax collector, a publican. One of the most familiar stories in the scripture, and one of the stories that is well worth reflecting on, particularly today. You have the Pharisee, the religious leader who stands at the front of the temple, whereas the tax gatherer stood at the back. 21st century humanity reflected in particularly this man, the Pharisee. He stood at the head of the congregation, at the head of the, the synagogue there right in front of the altar, and he looked up and he said, you know, Lord, I am very grateful that I'm not like that poor wretch standing at the back of the synagogue, that tax collector, that sinner. I give tithes to the poor and I'm not grasping, unjust, adulterous, or like that man in the back of the synagogue. The tax co collector, on the other hand, stood at the back of the synagogue, said he, he would not even look up. He looked down. He dared not look up, it says. He would not dare raise his eyes to heaven, 
But the tax collector beat his breast, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Then the Lord went on to say that the man in the back of the temple went home justified, but this man didn't. 21st century humanity in snapshot. I think within each of us there is a battle between the Pharisee and the publican and in the lives of so many today it seems like the Pharisee is winning. Perhaps in your life and in my life we can see ourselves as the Pharisee. The man who's boasting about himself all the time. When he looks at himself he's sinless. He sees no sin when he looks at himself. He sees no wrongdoing. He justifies everything. He rationalizes everything. And yet, the man in the back of the synagogue, everybody else, any problem with society today is not due to me, it's due to them. They're the cause of all the problems. I'm innocent, after all. The Lord calls us to accountability, and he calls us to an honesty, a recognition that we are, are ourselves, our true selves, our true self is found reflected in the mind of God. I am who I am, not in my own eyes, but in God's eyes, because he cannot deceive nor be deceived. I am not who I think I am, because I can deceive myself, I can lie to myself. We see plenty of lies going on. I lie to myself sometimes. Do you? When we come before the Lord and look up at the cross, or when we bow our heads like the, the, the tax collector and realize that we're unworthy even to raise our eyes, we know that we are sinners. And to be a sinner doesn't mean we're damned necessarily. To be a sinner means to recognize we need a savior. The greatest evil in the world is not sin, Bishop Sheen said. The greatest evil in the world is the denial of sin. Because when we deny sin in our lives, when we deny sin in the world, when we reflect upon our, our own innocence all the time, never, never recognizing sin in us, then we don't need a Savior. Why do I need a Savior? He needs a Savior. Deacon Mano needs a Savior. I don't need a Savior. Because after all, I'm innocent. I am not who I am in my own eyes because I can lie very easily to myself or even in the eyes of other people because I can fake it with you. But we cannot deceive him. And so if we want to be justified, we have to be like the, the tax gatherer, the tax collector, call him a publican. Lord, I don't look at those people and justify myself. I don't need to look at anybody else. I can only look at myself through your eyes and recognize how flawed, how fallible, and how failing I am. But that not, need not lead me to despair, O oh Lord, my Savior, because I know I need you. I need you in my life. 21st century humanity doesn't need a Savior. Everybody saves himself. Everybody saves herself. Who needs a Savior? when I'm perfect. Everybody else is flawed, but I'm perfect. A humble person, the scripture talks about he who humbles himself will be exalted. A humble person is not one who says, oh, I'm a no good piece of dung. Always putting himself down. You ever notice sometimes when people are always putting themselves down, themselves down, you wonder why it is they keep focusing on themselves so much. It's kind of a form of pride sometimes when we're putting ourselves down all the time. A humble person recognizes the truth about himself. And the truth is, you are a sinner. I am a sinner. And all of us need a Savior. And we have one. And his name is Jesus. This gospel, the scripture from 1 Corinthians 12, says that we have been led astray to idols whenever the impulse drove us. That's a great line. Driven to mute idols whenever the impulse dro drove us. So many, oftentimes, myself included, are, seem to be driven 
to worship false gods in the sense to place my priorities in the wrong place or look for solutions to my life's problems not in the Savior but into material things. Why, why the drug addiction if it isn't that people are looking for a Savior in the wrong place? Why so much violence if it isn't that people are looking for solutions to their lives in all the wrong ways? Why pornography? Why sex addiction? Why the compulsion and the impulsion to f try to find salvation in all the wrong places, in all the wrong ways, in all the wrong people? The Christian message is a simple one. Seek salvation in the only one who can save and who has saved us, and his name is Jesus Christ. This scripture goes on in Corinthians talking about the Spirit receiving so many gifts from the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who gifts us and makes us who we are. It's God who makes us the people we are in terms of the giftedness that we have. We can take credit for nothing. This Pharisee took credit for everything. Anything good about him wasn't due to him, it was due to God's grace. And so we come with humility, with the publican at the back of the church tonight. We come before the Savior of the world, and with that tax gatherer, that publican, we bow our heads, recognizing that we really are not even worthy to lift up our eyes, to look upon or to, look, to gaze upon the heart of Christ. But to know he loves us in an infinite way, and he calls us to himself and wants to set us free of all the idols in our lives that destroy us. He wants to bring us peace. And so... When the host is raised and the bells are rung and the Savior of the world comes before us behind the appearance of bread and wine, when those bells are rung, cry out with the publican, cry out from our hearts, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And then listen as he tells you, he wants to renew within you and me his Holy Spirit who gives us true and lasting peace. Credo in unum Deum.
Dominus vobiscum, Orate, frate.
pero mia secula seculorum. Dominus vobiscum, sur suam corda, Gracias agamus Domino Deo Nostro. Vere inium et justum et secum et salutare, nos tibi semper in ubique gratias agere. Domine Sancte Pater, Omnipotens Eterne Deus, qui cum unigenito filio tuo, et Spiritus Sancto unus es Deus, unus es Dominus, non in unius singularitate personae, sed in unius trinitate substantiae. Quare enim de tua gloria revelante te credimus, hoc de filio tuo, hoc de spiritu santo, sine diferencia discrezioni sentimus. Pur in confessione vere sempiterne que deitatis, er in personis proprietas, Er in essencia unitas, er in maestate adore tu requalitas. Quam laudan angeli atque archangeli, cherubim coque ac serafim, qui non cessan clamare cotidie una voce dicente. Santo.
per omnia secula seculorum. Oremus, preceptis salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater noster qui es in celis, sanctifice tuur nomen tuum, Advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicur in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis horie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Per omnia secula seculorum. Ax domini sit semper vobiscum. Subdinius Domine Domine non subdinius Etianus Dei, Eti Quitol Picata Mundi, Domine Non Sum Dinius, Venetius Protecta Mio, Satan from the Girl, Bort Sanabica Animaia. Non Sum Dinius, Meum, Satan from the Girl, Bort Sanabica Animaia. Domine Non Sum Dinius, Venetius Protecta Mio, Satan from the Girl, Bort Sanabica Animaia.
Dominus Vobiscum Oremus Quesumus Domini Deus Noster 
ut cos divinis reparare non desini sacramentis, tuis non desti duas benius auxilis. Per nominum nostrum Iesum Christum finium tuum, qui tecum vire pregnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Dominus vobiscum. Ite. et filius et spiritus sanctus Dominus Vobiscum in itim sancti evangelii siculum Ioannem in principio et verbum verat apodium leas et verum ok, we should help it in only this is in fact in itim sancti Dominus Vobiscum in itim sancti Dominus Vobiscum in itim sancti 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 in itim when the Arab ones first practice, they didn't know it. The main two aim was you can collaborate with the aim is to study their theory. It's preparing on the aim is to not send you the wrong, not the car, send you the wrong, not the very city, and not the suit. Therefore, Carl Bach, and that's the Tavi Tavi de Nobis. Beat him, score him, and he is from Quasi, and he is part of him, gratia, and very tatis. A couple of announcements. There are a few seats remaining on the bus to go to Sioux City, the Trinity Heights Shrine there in Sioux City, Iowa. And we're going on August 24th. We leave in the morning and come back in the evening. We've uh, rented a bus for the day. It's not a school bus, so it's more comfortable than a school bus. And uh, uh, it's a lovely shrine, and it's a lovely day. So if you'd like to join us, there's just a few more seats left. Call the parish office. Uh, confirmation classes begin September 1st. More information in your bulletin. And upcoming September 8th is the Fall Festival, also called the Family Festival. It's an opportunity for us to gather as a parish to enjoy good food, uh, Italian, Spanish, and Vietnamese food, uh, kids' rides, and activities uh, for young and old, and that'll be September 8th beginning with a bilingual mass at 11 o'clock at the Grotto. God bless you all.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. of the devil. May God rebuke him. Come we pray. Now comes to the heavenly host by the power of God and of Satan and all the other evil spirits. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. The immaculate heart of Mary. Saint Joseph. Saint Anthony. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.